But for those getting into it for the first time, or editing quick videos for, I don't know, a startup YouTube channel for instance, from my perspective at least, this is a great way to get you started. If there is one thing that Acer love to give people, it is options. Let me explain. Acer has several different ranges of Windows 10 devices that are aimed at different audiences. Now, if we just look at laptops for home, sorry gaming, uh, they have Aspire, Swift, and Spin. The Aspire range is geared towards everyday computing from entry-level performance to high-level performance in a traditional chassis. The Spin range goes for the two-in-one modern design, which aims to be forward-thinking and innovative. That leaves the Swift range, devices that are thin, stylish, and give you the power you need in a mobile form. Each range is then divided up into numbers. So if we stick with the Swift, we have Swift 1, Swift 3, Swift 5, and Swift 7. Each one is like an evolution of the previous, pushing the idea of thin, light, and stylish design further and further. See, lots of options. That brings us to today's overview with a device from the Acer Swift range. The Acer Swift 3, to be precise. But not just any Swift 3, no, 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 no. This one has something a little bit different. It's got a lot to do with Intel. So let's dive in. This is the Acer Swift 3 X. First things first, if you're already subscribed to the channel, welcome back. And if you're new, hello! We are Microsoft Expert Zone UK and I, and this is what we call an overview. So we'll be trying to give you everything we think you need to know about this device, what its positives are, so you can form your own opinion. Do keep in mind as well that everything we say is based on what's available in the UK and Ireland. Other regions may differ. But if you like this video, we'd really appreciate if you subscribed. Plus, you can check out our other product overviews, including one we did recently on the Acer Swift 5, which has a lot of similarities to the Swift 3X here. So go check that out after this one. The Acer Swift 3X is, in a way, doing two things. One, it's offering up an alternative, more powerful option of an already popular design. That leads into the other thing, which is helping a certain processor manufacturer move back into a tech space they haven't been in for a while. That would be Intel, who, for the first time in a long time, have made a discrete GPU in the form of Intel Iris Xe Max, which is in this device. Now, if you don't know what I'm on about, stick around, we will get to that bit, but let's do the usual first and cover the outside of this device. First thing to notice is, of course, the color. There are two colors to choose from. The one you see here is Steam Blue, and it's also available in Safari Gold. The finish is quite reflective. It bounces light off of it really nicely, but the Swift 3X also features a two-tone design. So there's one color for the body, and then there's one color for the hinge, which on the blue model here is this greeny blue. It's very nice. I was just rubbish in art class, so my ability to name colors is terrible. My red-headed friend says it's turquoise, probably. Now, a Swift is meant to be thin and light. The Swift 3X has a very thin screen, which when combined with the body, gives you an overall thickness of 17.95 millimeters, which is about the width of my left index finger. The 3X also weighs in at just 1.40 kilograms. Now, as I've said already, the Acer Swift range does get thinner and lighter as you go from the Swift 1 to 3 to 5, etc. But in the case of the 3X, it's still really easy to carry around and throw in your bag, so no worries there. We have a solid selection of ports. On one side, we have the DC in-port for your charging, full-size HDMI, USB-A 3.2, as well as a USB-C port, which supports Thunderbolt 4. On the other side, we have another USB-A port, as well as your headphone jack as well. The rear of the device is where you'll find your speaker grills, as well as vents for your fans, and then those rubber feet, uh, with the hinge having additional feet to raise the device when you open the lid. But that's pretty much it for the outside, so let's get this thing open.
Here we have a 14 inch full HD IPS display. The bezels are pretty thin with an 84% screen to body ratio and for the color buffs it fills 72% of the NTSC color gamut. As per usual for all the people watching who like me don't understand color gamuts, uh, the display has a really nice vibrance to it when you're opening photos or watching videos and stuff like that. Down on the keyboard, first off we should point out the extra vent at the top which is for your Intel GPU. Yes, I know, we haven't got to that bit yet. Patience! The keyboard they have on the Asus Swifts, they normally have really great key travel and well-spaced keys. It's exactly the same here. I found the typing experience to be really natural. Um, I can't find much to complain about, honestly. Uh, for a small laptop, it's a solid typing experience. You have your row of function keys at the top. I'm still a big fan of that instant screen to black function key. We have the trackpad which sits slightly to the left and does the job for your gestures and has a clickiness rating of... Nice. We have a fingerprint sensor here as well, which supports uh, Windows Hello for instant login. Uh, you can also set up multiple fingerprints if you like. Your webcam is a standard 720p camera uh, with an inbuilt microphone. This is how your Skype calls, your team calls, your whatever calls will sound and look like. There you go. And lastly, we have the speakers, which they sound like this. Here we are, look at that. It's like a weird inception type thing. There is a DTS audio processing app which is pre-installed where you can fiddle about with things like the EQ. Otherwise, this again does the job just fine for watching videos online. Now, whilst I get out of this screen here, it's time we looked at a rather important part of this overview. Performance. So here is our model of the Asus Swift 3X. We have an 11th gen Intel i7 processor, 16 gigabyte of RAM, one terabyte of SSD storage, and finally, Intel Iris Xe Max graphics. Yes, it's that moment I said we'd talk about. Intel Iris Xe Max graphics is Intel's first dive into the dedicated discrete GPU space in a very long time. We won't be doing benchmarks here, that's not what we do. Uh, we'll just be looking at actual experiences. Now, I realize that all sorts of different people will watch our overviews with different understandings of what is in a PC. So for the benefit of those who need a bit more of a guide to GPUs, I'm gonna pull up my green screen again. Intel is known for making processors, the brain of the PC. Now, the processor will link up with a bunch of other stuff, one of which is the graphics processor unit, or GPU. Now, there are different ways of approaching graphics on a PC. You can have an integrated GPU, which is included on the processor, and that is basically like having one car, but it has two drivers. This is what Intel has done for years, using the processor to handle graphical tasks. Alternatively, you can have a dedicated GPU, which is completely separate to the processor and handles all of your graphical tasks. So that would be two cars with two drivers. Dedicated GPUs are typically seen in gaming PCs with AMD and Nvidia being the two key manufacturers. So, why does all this matter? Well, for the tech enthusiasts out there, seeing Intel making a discrete dedicated GPU is really interesting as it adds another player to the market. Now, the way Intel are selling this is that Intel Iris Xe Max is optimized to work with their 11th gen processors, giving you better performance all round as they exchange information much quicker. It's like two cars playing the perfect game of tennis between their open windows, which I would not recommend, and that's just a terrible analogy, but we move on. Now, right out the gate, this isn't aimed at gamers. Uh, sure, we can game on this laptop. Uh, I had Ori and the Will of the Wisps running at 60 frames per second on balanced settings, for instance. I had Forza Horizon 4 run its optimization, and that was able to uh, run at 30 frames per second. Uh, both of which, by the way, you can try via Game Pass for PC. Cheeky little plug there. But ultimately, it's an experience that's better for the casual gamer out there. The more dedicated will be looking at a gaming PC, like Acer's Predator range, for instance. So then, this is aimed more at creatives and productivity. For starters, having a discrete GPU means it's small, so the Acer Swift 3X here is still what it should be. Thin, light, stylish, easy to take around. To try this out, I started with the productivity stuff and just opened up everything I can from Microsoft 365, and sure enough, the Acer Swift 3X is fast for throwing things like Word, PowerPoint, etc. side by side. Then it also does a great job for using more creative features in those apps like 3D models. 
I did also download uh, some of Adobe's photography apps, which you can try out as well. They do three months for free, thanks to Microsoft 365 Partner Benefits, so check that out when you get a moment. Uh, things like Photoshop are easy to manage. I use Photoshop a lot when it comes to creating thumbnails that we have on these videos, and just by playing around with some of our uh, graphics that we've made before here, um, I found it to be a great experience. Now, just out of intrigue, I wanted to see what its video editing performance is like. Something I do a lot, right? So I opened up an old project with my video editing software of choice, in this case, Premiere Pro. Other video applications are available. Uh, here's what happened. If you're dealing with standard MP4 footage, the preview experience is actually pretty good. I had a mixture of HD and 4K footage and a short two minute video, and I was pretty happy with the preview experience. It's a simple edit, which is really what I expect to do here. Also, I'd recommend, uh, if you can, hooking up to a monitor uh, if you are editing, since the small screen, it does smush everything together, depending what software you're using, so just be aware of that. Now, for rendering, my two minutes and nine second video took two and a half minutes to render using the high quality HD preset. Now, with maximum render quality turned on, that goes up to over five minutes. Now, if you're a professional video editor, you already know that you are going to be looking at something at a much higher level. But for those getting into it for the first time, or editing quick videos for, I don't know, a startup YouTube channel, for instance. From my perspective, at least, this is a great way to get you started. This video, in a way, has been a story of two parts. We have the Acer Swift 3X, a thin, light, Windows 10 device with great performance, great battery life, which by the way, in, in all this excitement, I didn't even mention, uh, but this is a claim of up to 17 and a half hours battery. Very cool. The other part of this story, though, has been Intel and what they bring to the table for someone looking for a small, stylish laptop that has just enough graphical power to do the tasks that they want to do. With all that said, what does this mean to the end user? What does it mean to you and me? Well, if I'm to give an opinion, this is the perfect kind of Windows 10 device for someone at home who is wanting to dip their toe into creative applications, maybe for the first time. You've got more than enough power to run creative apps for photography, and it's also pretty good at some basic video editing as well. For some, that may be all they ever need. For others, you may upskill yourself and go professional, where you'll be looking at a whole other world of options like the Acer Concept D, which I am totally not name dropping here as a cheap ploy to try and secure one. Acer. The Acer Swift 3X lives up to Acer's vision of creating a line of thin, light and stylish laptops. Granted, if style is more important to you, you may well look at the Swift 5 or the Swift 7. But as stylish packages go that pack a lot of power, you can do very well here with an Acer Swift 3X. That is it from me. If you've made it to here, then you may as well click that subscribe button. Feel free to check out our other overviews, including our look at the Acer Swift 5. Or if you'd rather check out uh, the gaming side of things, Ben does some great overviews on this channel, so you can check that out here as well. That's your lot. See you around.